this is the base. It's a receiver, same actually receiver of this. Just one switch is turned on and versus off. So this is receiving information from the satellites. It is a one-way communication to or from the satellites, not to the satellites. Only receives data. The data is stored on a card in here and we do an opus correction. Do you guys remember what opus is? Who can tell me? Someone tell me. He uses the, uh, what are they, the static GPS locations of like other base stations to correct your data. Yeah, you remember what they call those base stations? No. Do you remember what OPA stands for? No. No. No one? Okay, so it's online positioning user service. It's a government funded deal, so let's use it. <laughs> yeah, and the cores are, are excuse me, the, the bases you refer to are cores, continuously operating receiver stations. So they're always collecting GPS data, so eventually you get this super fantastic, if that's a new word, super fantastic coordinate for this point. And what cores does is it basically corrects the position for that mail from this data relative to those cores positions. So we're getting an approved position. So I'll process that data tonight, the data on this card. I'll process it via Opus. I'll just send it to them. They email it back to me uh, a few minutes later with an approved position for that nail. And then I will move all of the data, data, all the data we collect today, I'll move it relative to that Opus position. Okay. So then, or now, this receiver is actually collecting data also. It does not store it in the same way. It doesn't store the raw data, okay? But it does store an XYZ coordinate. So this receiver is receiving data from satellites. Same as that. This receiver is transmitting a correction. So this receiver is also receiving that correction. So what it does is when I take a measurement, I push the button, boom, figures out, here I am, X, Y, Z. And it's receiving delta X, delta Y, delta Z. So it shifts that data slightly. So it's an improved location of the rover. Okay. So I need at least five satellites. The reason I need at least five is because we're solving for X, Y, Z, and T for time. That's what GPS does. So I have four equations, but if I just use four equations, four satellites, right? I get a perfect answer. Is my answer perfect? No, there's some error. So we have one more equation so we, we can analyze the error. And right now, there's a, a field here that's 3D CQ, which is 3D quality control. It is at 11 millimeters. Pretty good considering the satellites that I'm measuring from are 20,200 kilometers away on an elliptical orbit. And I created a code earlier, AT, which is for aerial target. So there's a code field. Make sure it's on AT. Okay, TP is for topo. So if you use the right arrow on the red button, is it scrolling through there? Yeah. Okay. It's AT. Okay, AT. And then down at the lower on the screen is the anno, which is for annotation. Okay. And you'll want to put the number in there, 16. So it's aerial target number 16. Okay. And then looking at the level bubble, you want it to be very close to level. And when you're ready, you can press F1 or F12, or OK. Point stored. Point stored. You measured. That's it. So what just happened? You measured a point. What does that consist of? Calculate a position for the base, calculate a position for the rover, apply the error from the base to the rover, right? So we have an improved coordinate 
coordinate is an XYZ location for the center of that target. Why do I care about these targets? 